Hello, good evening, everyone. I want to believe we had a great day. Just as introduced earlier by our team lead, in person of Dr. Bayo, I am Dr. Janet Elijah Oni, a veterinary officer in Emsa Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Services, that's EMMIT. You are all welcome to tonight's training, and I want to believe that we are all ready for tonight's training. Okay. Not to waste too much of our time, let's just go straight to the topic of today, which is feedlot farming. I'll be uploading some images and then I'll be doing some audio so as to explain some of the images um, that I'll be uploading. If you have any question in the course of the training, please feel free to raise your hand, maybe by sending an emoji or sending a message and I will post and then explain some things. So let me just go straight to feedlot farming, what you need to know. So the, for the content, we'll be having introduction, procurement and selection, advised breeds, housing, facility preparation, pre-induction treatments, and then quarantine. The introduction. So a feedlot is a confined yard area with watering and then feeding facilities where cattle, sheep, or goats are held and then completely and or mechanically fed for the purpose of production. One thing you bear in mind when you want to go into feedlot farming, the basic principle in feedlot system is just to increase the amount of fat gained by each animal as quickly as possible. If animals are kept in confined quarters rather than being allowed to range freely over grassland, they tend to gain weight more quickly and then more efficiently. And so when you're going into feedlots, this is what you have at the back of your mind. They are going solely for the purpose of production and then for the purpose of profit. The feedlots represent an intensive production system with the goal of growing and or fattening cattle, sheep or goat until they reach slaughter weight. You go to the market, you get your cattle, you get your sheep, you get your goats, and then you, when it comes to feedlot, it's an in intensive system where you put them in a confined area. You feed them either mechanically or you do it by hand just for them to gain weight quickly and then they, they reach slaughter weight as, as quick as possible then you'll be able to get back your money because, of course, the sole essence of going into it is to make profit. And you know, all this happens by you providing a steady, a high energy diet for the animals. And then you manage your cattle, you manage your sheep and go to minimize health problem and stress. And then you are good to go when it comes to feed, lot farming. And let's go to the next one, which is the procurement and selection. We are going into feed, lot farming you will need to go select your animals for use. There are some key things that you need to note in going to the market and getting your animals. The first one is to have a visual assessment of the animal. You check the fat, the fat covering of the body. You need to know, you need to see because all these things add, have a lot to do in your meat yield, in your milk yield as the case may be. And at the end of the day, it has a that's um everything to do about your profit at the end of the day so you check the fat and then so you check the muscles because muscle scoring is the assessment of thickness and shape of the muscles in relation to frame size of the animal you need to know the animal you are buying is it a skinny one because you, you don't just go to the market and they just buy anything because you need to know that this also you, you you want to keep them, you want to feed them in order for them to get gain weight in time. So then you need to look at the muzzle of the muzzle of the animal because the degree of muscling influences dressing percentage and the meat yield at the end of the day. You know that the muzzle of the animal is the meat. So therefore you need to know and this have indicates um, is therefore indicating the greater value at the end of the day to tell whether you you would have profit on it or not so you need to observe your animals very well before selecting another thing you need to observe your animals from the inside 
to assess the thickness of both legs at stifle area at stifle area you remember you need, you need to check all these things you check the, the, the both legs the the from the stifle area down the from the hind limbs you check you want to check the stance of the animal how are parts are the hind limbs you need to observe the curvature of the muscles is it that it's not that this animal is sick before you buy them you know you need to check all these things because it has a lot to do in when you bring finally bring them in for feed loss please hope i'm not too fast can i continue please thank you okay let's go to other important body appearances for growth potential you want to know if this animal that you have selected you want to know their growth potential you want to know how whether they will grow well or not whether they will do well or not so first thing you check the broad always know that the broad and wide forehead of either your cattle your sheep or your goats indicates stunting and of course you don't want to buy an animal that will not grow so you need to check is he having a broad and a wide forehead because this indicates stunting so you check the hair coat of the animal because rough hair coats indicate lack of nutrition three you check for for your bulls for example those bulls with shorter neck they mature compared to longer neck and then for those of us that know this breed of or this um cattle breed called bukolo i know in the north central here it's more common people even go for it very well because it have a shorter neck bull and then they mature compared to bulls with longer neck so another thing we should check is wilder shoulders with good at guard depth when we get to the measurements uh, how to measure life weight I, I will explain more on the at guard and all but you need to check the animals with wider shoulder shoulders with good at guard depth you need to know how to measure your animals in order to know if this will grow well or not another thing you need to know for growth potential is bulls with medium body length are better in meat yield only if heavily muzzle I, I, I will still need to explain to us how to measure uh, the, the the weight of your animal using measuring the length measuring the guards and all when we get to that point i will explain to us how we do it also check the brisket area is it moderately trim and all that then you check the legs are they squarely set are they naturally straight is there anything happening happening to the animal's leg i'm sure you don't want to buy an animal that's having issues with the leg and all so all these things are you need to check the body appearances because it, indigre, it, it indicates if your animal will grow well or not. Please, are we following? Can I continue? Or oh, we are still going through the previous audio. Thank you. Okay, not to waste too much of our time, I'll just continue. So the next slide is um, feedlot, cattle, sheep, and goat handling standards. There are some objectives for safety handling loading and then unloading so let me just quickly run through so we will know the handling standards when it comes to our feed lot the first one you need to tag or mark each animal at the purchase this is very very important because i've had cases whereby a client goes to the market buy an animal then he buys he pays with the mindset of they will load it for him but on getting to to his place he found out that this was not the animal he picked so there have been cases like that so what we what, what is advisable is you tag your animal or you mark them for identification at the point of purchase and then two you don't want to stress these animals that are coming to 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 to, to feed you, you don't want to stress the animal that you hope to yield great thing for you so you need to provide comfort which includes shade water to the animal this is very very important and the third one is you, you need to do um thick bedding or sand over the floor of the truck in order to prevent slipping slipping and then falling of the animals of course you, you don't want to buy an animal and then 
before you get to to the farm you have cases of injury at the point of by, by, by reason of the animal falling off the truck or something so you, you, you do um bedding in the truck or you put sand this we we, we prevent slipping of the animal and then at the end of the day you avoid injury to the animal and then you number each animal in the vehicle both you who is the owner and then the driver because we've had cases whereby a farmer um get a, an animal maybe purchase an animal from the market and then before he gets home <coughs> excuse me before he gets home just because you you load your animal with other people that came to purchase and then there is a confusion or something like that so you need to number your animal so both you with the owner with the farmer and then and then the driver before overloading you need to know the number <coughs> excuse me you need to know the number in each vehicle and this is to be verified by both the owner and the driver without overloading the truck all right the next one is um the breeds advised breeds for your cattle shokoto gudale which is also known as bokolo you know i mentioned it the other time bokolo grows very fast and then bokolo has a it, it yields um um it, it yields mozu mo and then at the end of the day you have um your milk yield compared to other breeds is more when it comes to bokolo so we advise you when you're going to feed lot for a cattle you get shokoto gudali also you can get your white full and these are very good breeds for feed lot and when it comes to your sheep and goats your west african drab dwarf breeds of sheep and goats is also good your red shokoto your sahari goats they are good your yakasa wuda balami sheep all these breeds they are good breeds that you can that you can um use for feedlots but always note that whether your choice of breed is pure breed or it's commercial or you want it red someone they are animal black their color color um they want it white or spotted one thing is you always bear in mind and put as a priority that when it comes to you selecting your breeds know that production is the number one thing when you're going into feedlot farming and then your profits these two things so it doesn't matter whether it's a product or commercial know that you are going into it for production purpose and for profit so these two things must be on your priority list when you're going into feedlot farming and then when you want to to, to select the breeds to use now let's go to our facility preparation for a feedlot farming you have to bear in mind you have to prepare the facility for you to use and the one thing that one thing that should come to your mind is water water is very very essential you can't start a feedlot farming without a readily available availability of water so one thing you should bear in mind is there must be water and it must be readily available to your animals because it's very very essential and the second thing you should check is the topography of the area you want to use as a farmer you don't want to use a, 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 a sloping land that encourages flooding you don't want to use an area where it is waterlogged of course you know in the long run if you keep your cattle for example even your your, your sheep and goats in, in such a place it could lead to disease example is foot and rot disease foot and uh, uh, yes foot, foot, foot and mouth disease you need to foot rot that i mean to say it leads to foot rot and you don't want to start having all this complications on the farm so you need to check the topography of the place you are using another thing that you you should have in your mind is the environment the, the, the place 
you, you want to cite this um you want you, you you've decided to be used for your faith lord family is it a place that is exposed to pollutants is it exposed to air pollutant like smoke um and, and all these exhausts from factories i'm sure you don't want to do that because all these things have an effect on your animal so you need to check the environment also check for things like is the place is it prone to snakes did, did you did, did you put anti snakes in the place all these things you need to check to prepare to prepare a place for you to use so it's not just a uh, you, you you have a piece of land and then you go buy animals and then come dump them there no at the end of the day you see that you are, you have lost instead of you having profit so you need to check is there water how is the topography of the place hope it's not encouraging to flood how is the environment hope it's, it's an environment that's not that snakes will not start visiting your farms and all so all these things you need to put in checks all right let's go to pre-induction treatment immediately upon arrival at the feedlot animals should be provided with clean water and fresh air i think i've said that just to avoid um, stress and all that also know that adding electrolytes to the drinking water may be useful in reducing stress because this animal has gone through stress and you're transporting them from point of purchase to your farm so adding an electrolyte to the drinking water may be useful to reduce stress in newly arrived animals. Now your animal must be weighed upon arrival as this is very important. Now I told us earlier that I'm going to tell us how you weigh your animal. Now for you to weigh, um, for you to weigh your animal, either your cattle or your sheep or your goats, you use a measuring tape, the normal measuring tape. I think tailors use it or no, you can use that. And then you measure the guts. And how do you measure the guts? You measure from the base, that you want to measure the heart guts, you measure from the base of the withers, down under the belly, just behind the elbow and foreleg and all the way back around the animal you measure from a point slightly the shoulder blade you want to go down the four limbs and then under the body behind the elbow all around the animal that is how you measure the gut and then you measure the length the length starts from the I, 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 I'll, I'll post a, a picture now just to depict it, just for you to have a clearer understanding of what I'm talking about. So to calculate your the, the, the weight of your animal is guard square times length divided by 300. And then for example, just like I've illustrated from the diagram I've uploaded, your that C. That point C, that's C, where the measure C, that's your guard. When you take your measuring tape, you go around your animal like that. For example, if you go around and then you have a 37 inches, for example, as your guard. And then your length, you put, you, you place your measuring tape from, you measure from that point A to point B, that's your length. And then, for example, if your length is 35 inches, so for you to calculate your the weight of your animal, which is guard square times length divided by 300. Since your guard is 37, your, 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 your length is 35. So you have 37 times 37, that's guard square. 37 times 37 times 35, which is your length. So your answer, you will not divide it by 300. At the end of the day, you'll be getting your answer in pounds, but you can convert pounds to kilogram. One pound equals 0 0.454 kilogram, which means that for what, whatsoever you get after calculating, after divided by 300, you just multiply it by 0 0.454, then you get your answer in kilogram. I don't know if we understand it, but if not, just let me know, then I will run through again. Thank you. So your pre-induction treatment just like i've started after measuring your weights i've told us the calculation of measuring weights 
you know it, it's good just like i said it's very important you know the weight of your animal because this help you to determine the body size this also help you monitor the changes in your animal you want to know is your animal growing because this is the main reason why you are going into feedlot feedlot farming so you weigh your animal from time to time make you monitor the changes you make you monitor the growth in your animals and also this also help you to administer drugs appropriately appropriately so let's go to the next point your livestock should be treated for internal and external parasites and vaccinated against clostridia clostridia diseases and infectious diseases such as bovine respiratory disease in cattle while held in quarantine especially if they have not received such treatment before you don't want to just take chance chances upon arrival of your animal and then you you, you just join them up with maybe previous animals you have on the farm or something you want to treat them as a farmer that is why you need to call the attention of experts of professionals to help you you need to treat them for internal external parasites you need to vaccinate them and all and let's go to the housing the development of housing and feed loss facilities requires integration of space just like i told you it's an intensive system of farming it requires space shelter is very very important you don't want to put your animals under extreme um sun rays or you want you want to put them under extreme cold so you have to provide the shelter for them feeding very 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 important because that is the, the main reason that that is how you can make them grow faster no since yeah it's an intensive system just like i've said you need to provide feeding water i've talked about that waste management waste management you don't want your farm to to, to be to be loitered with animal feces and all there must be proper waste management and then handling facilities fences are very important to ensure security and an efficient flow of animal and human traffic fencing is important in feeding and drover lanes drover lanes are at the back of the pens to move cattle easily in and out of pens for receiving hospital and then shipping just like a, a restricting um, kind of facility that you put there for, for easy handling of your animals. The feeding troughs require a neck ray for easy access. You don't want your feeding troughs to be so low and then your animal goes down bending and eating. You, you, you need to raise it up to, to at least a level whereby they can easily just stick their neck out and then eat and then the feeding trough should not be too high because you want to feed them that it shouldn't be too high it shouldn't be higher than their reach so you need to place the feeding trough trough in a way that the animal can easily assess it and then power security this is very you don't want to take chances at all you need to consider a quarantine section for newly arrived animals for control and prevention of foot and mouth diseases that's fmd because it's a high, highly contagious contagious disease so you need to quarantine your animal if it's necessary you need to quarantine them so from your bowel security you note so your bowel security is very 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 important you don't want to take chances in the spread of contagious diseases so you need to quarantine your newly arrived animals then note the hospital pen quarantine pens loading and unloading area should be near the main entrance you don't want to site your quarantine pen inside the main farm neither do you want to site your hospital pen inside the main farm so all this should be done at the entrance so that as your animals are arriving those that need to quarantine be quarantined. Those that need to be attended to the hospital for one or two treatments should be done at the entrance. After which you have satisfied them all and fit for them to join up with other farms or for them to now continue. Then you, excuse me, then you take them into the main farm. So always note that your hospital pen, your quarantine pen, 
Loading and unloading area should be near the main entrance of the place that you are using for the feedlot. Yes, we have come to the end of today's training. So if there's any question, feel free to ask. If there's any clarification, please let me know. Thank you.